Her story is an opportunity for us to have conversations with women leaders so other women can envision leadership possibilities in their own career. I'm in a brand new role at a wonderful organization, the Foundation for the National Institutes of Health, and I am enjoying getting to know the organization and its people. So this is an exciting time for me, and I am encountering all kinds of fantastic leaders, including many women who I hadn't met before, but I'm truly enjoying and getting to know and work with. Women founders are not uh, directly associated only with women's health companies anymore, which is fantastic. It's this you know, reckoning that female founders can do a lot of different things. And so we're seeing really innovative models of care, a lot coming from female founders because they are the ones that are navigating those purchasing decisions firsthand. What are the consequences of so many Americans delaying care. The fact that many folks have you know, not gotten their preventative screenings or they have not been following up with their medications, which has been compounded by this recession environment. And so cost of care and affordability are very much still concerns. I have been thinking and reading a lot about LBJ and his record of accomplishment in Washington. When you think about the creation of Medicare, Medicaid, you know, the Great Society, civil rights. These were remarkable achievements. And and you say, we may not agree on everything, but we've got to come together. We've got to meet in the middle. And I certainly think that applies to healthcare today. What she did in the face of her husband facing cancer and then passing and the way she mobilized with stand up to cancer and what she did there was spectacular. And then for her all these years later in this next chapter of her life to hold Maya and Brian's hand and try to lead a new coalition across neurodegenerative diseases is incredible.